it's at 945 and we are excited. We're already experiencing what God is doing among us, but we get to sit under the word of God. How many know the word of God applied to our daily life will transform you? We don't just come to do church. We are the church. And when we get around each other as iron sharpens iron, so one sharpens another, right? So I'm just going to pray real quick that the Holy Spirit will move among us, that we will hear what we're supposed to hear. How many know that someone can preach a message and everyone can hear something different because God's working on you as an individual because he sees you individually? You get that? Father, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for your house. We're thankful for your word. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move among us today, that you would speak to our hearts, that we would not just leave the same way we came in, but we would leave transformed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You know, I'm really excited because tonight I get to sit under the word. I um, I normally am the one that is bringing the message, and that's what I do. Uh, but I'll tell you, behind every amazing man is an even more amazing woman. And then the old ladies say, amen. Man, right? But I'll tell you, um, my secrets to success obviously is God at work in my life, but it's the woman that he gave me. And Pastor Julie is one of a kind. She is very different, which is a huge balance in my life. Uh, for all these years, whether youth and young adult pastoring, now senior pastor, and she always brings a different perspective that keeps me open to understanding. Some people see it different than I see it. And she preaches so much to me, I thought she could preach to you this morning. Come on, would you give her a huge hand as she comes? Come on. God, we love you. We thank you. We're excited for this morning, and I pray that you would just speak through me, and we would have a great time. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So Pastor Chad and Pastor John have done an amazing job in this series. Let's give them a hand. We've been talking through different topics in the Bible to encourage us in areas of focus growth. We've done a spirit of excellence, our God who listens, and a lifestyle of servanthood. And today, I'm going to shift our focus to something that can get really overlooked, which is a focus on friendships. Because friendships are super important, and I feel like not everybody feels that way. So what is a friend? Someone who loves you, someone who expects nothing from you, someone who loves you the way that God tells us to love you. They stick by your side when times are tough, and they will never purposely leave you, lead you into doing stupid things. Like, I know boys, sometimes you do stupid things, but I mean, some stupid things are okay, but not every stupid thing if it's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> they will always have your best interest at heart, and they stand up for you and speak positively about you. So you should also be speaking positively about them. If they're not speaking positively about you, then they're really not your friend. So how many of you could use more friends like that? We can never have too many friends that just love us and we love them. God's word tells us how important it is to have good friends. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, it says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So we know we're not supposed to do life alone. We know we're supposed to have friends and relationships to protect us from hard times, protect us from whatever the enemy has to point towards us, and for us to protect others. And although there are many kinds of friendships, today I'm talking about four specific types of friendships. So number one is the adventurous friend. This is the friend that calls you up. You may be like in the middle of the night and like, I just feel like going to the beach. Let's go to the beach. Or you have a friend that likes to skydive and they're like, I'm going to go skydiving. Do you want to come skydiving with me? And if that's you, I, awesome. I would never do that. But maybe, maybe let's go whatever you guys like to do. Adventurous friends. I'm spontaneous now. I was spontaneous back then, but it, I'm not sure when it happened, but we, on 4th of July, we were trying to figure out what to do, Chad and I and two friends, and our friend had never been to the beach before, ever. They were from the Midwest, and we're at Panera on July 3rd, and I'm like, 
They were like, let's go to Hampton. Let's go to Rhode Island. I'm like, let's go to Virginia Beach. And everyone stopped talking, dropped their forks, and were like, let's do it. And I was like, okay. So we packed up our car, left about 9 o'clock that night, drove overnight to Virginia Beach, got there about 8, 9 in the morning. Our cooler leaked in the car and got stuff all wet, but we didn't care because we're like, we are in Virginia Beach on the 4th of July, and this is amazing. So we got to watch our friend go into the ocean. We had fireworks. We did all this crazy stuff. We stayed at a friend's house, and then literally we got back to the house around 10. We were like, oh, we're going to watch movies. We're going to do this. We didn't. We went to sleep, woke up the next morning, and drove back home. And it was the most amazing, spontaneous thing I've ever done in my life. And um, I, might, I might do that again. I encourage you. If you have a friend that's going to be spontaneous like that, just do it. Like, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Um, in 1 John 4.11, it says, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. These kind of friends are about peace, love, and fun. We do not dig into deep problems with the adventurous friend. The adventurous friend is for fun, to keep us our minds off of all the things going on in our life that we know, like, okay, if I hang out with this person, I'm going to laugh, I'm going to have fun, and all my troubles can kind of stay here for now, and then I'll go back to them later, but they can just encourage me and just to have some fun and a release. So we all need that kind of friend. Number two is a cheerleader friend. This is a friend that provides moral support. They encourage you to take healthy risks, like Pastor Chad did when he was like, I think that you should speak today. And I was like, I'm not so sure I feel that way, but okay, because I trust you to give me a healthy risk. They make you feel as though you can do anything you put your mind to, and you know they would never encourage you to do something that could hurt you. In Ephesians 4.29, it says, And never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to them. So I don't know if some of you are like words of affirmation person. I'm a words of affirmation person. It's my love language. I love words. But I also love to give words. And so I know for some people it's hard to give words. And so you really need to dig in and try to give words to your friends that encourage them. Even if it's just one word or two words, it doesn't have to be this huge thing. Um, because it's so much of a love language to me, years ago when we were um, youth pastoring at Summerfest, we would get all the girls together at different times of the day, and we would do these things called pick-me-ups. And so we would all sit in this, like the size of the stage, and we would just do this big, giant oval, and everyone would have notebooks and pens, and we would go around to each person and pass it around, and everybody would write something about that person that has their name on the top. And then it was something that if you didn't know them, it's like, oh, you did so good at knee ball today. Oh, I can't believe you got this score. You were so into worship, and I'm so, like, wowed by it or whatever. Or it would go to, God's got a plan for you. God loves you. You have purpose. You are cared about, and you're loved. Let's hang out. Like, it can go from one extreme to the other. And I'm telling you that these things, I still have all 13 of mine, and I still regularly go back and read them because seeing what other people think about you does something. And it doesn't mean like, oh, look at me. I'm so awesome. It's just you don't think so highly of yourself when a lot of other people do. And so when you can get that back from somebody else, it means everything. And I really tried to figure out how to get all of us to do it here, but I'm really not sure. So instead, I'm challenging all of you to talk to each other and encourage each other in something or someone in your world that you don't know. Um, So my youngest daughter, Mackenzie, it's like she can feel people's vibes, and God's just got a gift on her. And so, like, we'll be at the grocery store or wherever, and she's like, Mommy, that woman's so beautiful. And I'm like, then you should tell her. And then she tells her, and this lady's a puddle of mush. And then I'm a puddle of mush because I'm like, oh, you heard God talking to you, and you're just giving it out to her. I'm like, it fills you up. And you may not think it does, and it may be awkward at first to be like, hey, bro, I like your shoes. (laughs) Or like, hey, bro. You're a good guy. Like, guys can do this too. You can find ways to do it. And I'm telling you that if someone came up to you and complimented you about anything, a guy would be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so we really need to try this week to find someone in your world or find a stranger. Because, I mean, like, think about the grocery store and all the stuff with the pandemic. Like, people were so mean to them. Like, if you didn't have this, you didn't have that, or anybody that was working, and, like, if you could just give a word of encouragement, it's going to, like, change their whole day. Number three is the loyal friend. 
This is a friend who keeps their word. They're always a phone call away, and they never speak bad about you. They never gossip about you. They're there for you, and they have your best interest in mind. You may not hang out with them a lot, but they're always there. And God shows us how to be a loyal friend by putting ourselves before others. Others, putting others before ourselves, because that would be wrong if you did it the other way. <laughs> John 15, 12 says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So when should they do that? Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all times. So I have a loyal friend. I was never a believer in like, you take medicine on an empty stomach, you're going to get sick because I've done it my whole life, like Tylenol or whatever, and you don't get sick. But this time I took medicine on an empty stomach and it made me really sick. So I was in a car headed to Devoted, like to the Logan Express, and I'm in a car with my friend and her husband and I'm driving and you know when you just feel it and you're like panicky and I'm like, no, I can make it, I can make it. And I'm like, can you pull over please? So I pull over in a parking lot, and then I'm like, I run out the car trying to, like, run, but not. And then I'm like, bleh, and, like, Bush meets me, I meet Bush. And then I walk back, and I'm like, what was that all about? Because I know they were watching me the whole time, even though they pretended like they weren't watching me. <laughs> and so I get back in the car, and I'm like, I got this, okay, like, 10 minutes, we'll get there. And I get there, and I see my loyal friend, and my loyal friend's looking at me like, oh, something just happened. And I'm like, something just happened. And so I tell this friend what happens, and they've got the mints and the gum and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, get on the bus. And, like, we had a bunch of girls, so I was like, I wanted to talk to everybody, but I didn't. I put on my headphones. I was listening to music. I'm like, I got this. I'm good. I'm good. I sat in the front. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm not good anymore. And I'm like, oh, no. And, like, thank God Logan Express has a toilet on the bus. So then... I'm like, okay, and then they see me run, so I run, and then I'm like, literally, like, panicking, because I can feel it, and I'm pulling and pulling, and the, the people are staring at me, like, what are you doing, and I wanted to be like, I'm going to throw up on you if you do not help me open this door, is someone in here, and they're just looking, and then I realized I was supposed to push, and so then I pushed the door open, I met the toilet, and the toilet met me, and then as I'm like, whatever, the Logan Express decides to use their awesome brakes, and then I went back like this, and then I went back again, and then it just made me feel worse, and so then I got out, went to my seat, and everyone's looking at me now like, what is wrong with this girl, and then um, we get to the airport, and this friend then does my boarding pass for me and puts my stuff up in the bin, and they could have been hanging out with the friends and talking, but they were like right there with me with like my baby and like let's hydrate you and then even to the point of like when turbulence hits I don't know if anyone else is this way I think I'm getting better I am because the girls are usually on a plane with me but I grabbed their hand and just squeezed when the turbulence was like and they didn't care this friend did not care that they didn't get to talk to their friends this friend didn't care that they missed out on all the fun hangout time because they were there for me without expecting anything in return so we need loyal friends in our life they love you and are willing to do everything they can to help you, even when you get sick on the Logan Express. Find yourself one of those friends. Um, we just need to be those loyal friends to each other also. So don't, everything I'm saying, we want to find these friends, but we also want to be these friends to other people too. Yeah. Number four is a deep friend. We all need that friend who can give us emotional and um, spiritual support that we need and tell us like it is, even if we don't want to hear it. So in Proverbs 27, 17, it says, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. A deep friend is a shoulder to cry on, an ear to listen, someone who's going to be there and not talk about whatever it is that you're saying to them, someone who's going to actually pray for you and pray with you. Um, you can be honest with them, and they won't judge you. So we all need this kind of friend, a friend that we can confide in when we're having a hard time. But again, we also want to be that friend to somebody else. And why do I take time to break down the different types of friendships is because if you mix them up, you can get hurt really bad. And so I had a friend that I trusted and I had so much fun with and we would do some of those spontaneous things and laugh and, and I didn't realize that I was giving my heart out to an adventurous friend. And so I told this person like everything from like, little kid issues growing up, like everything. And then it was like they just took a knife and stabbed it, twisted it, and pulled it out. And I was heartbroken 
because I chose an adventurous friend to be my deep friend. And you can't do that because the adventurous friend can't handle what you have to say to them. And so I threw a pity party longer than I'd like to admit and was like, I'm never going to have friends again. I don't trust anybody. Chad's my best friend, and that's all I need. And he is my best friend, but you need girlfriends too, and guys, you need guy friends because I would just keep talking, and then at some point it's like, okay, Jay, you got to find a friend because I just, I can't, I can't. <laughs> so then God spoke to me, and he said, you can trust somebody. Just because of one person doesn't mean every other person in the world is a terrible person. And I said, yes, it does, because I can be friends with myself, and I won't tell myself what I'm doing wrong, and I'm fun, and I like me. And then he's like, no. And I was like, fine. So then when I came to realize that I had to listen to God, because he's always right, I then got over my pity party, and started praying that I would find friends that I could click with, that I would have fun with, that I could be spontaneous with, but someone that I could tell my deepest, darkest things and trust them. And you don't want to have like five or 10 deep friends because all those friends are not your deep friends. It's like you have one or two that like you can really trust and that's it. So I prayed and then I even prayed to laugh with them because I love to laugh. And if You've been around for a while and you've heard it. Maybe you'll hear it someday, but I have what our family calls a psycho laugh. And so this laugh is like crazy. And I recently found out my dad has it because I was wondering where does this come from. So my dad and I were doing it on Christmas. And then we found out Mackenzie had it. So the Mackenzie was doing it with us. And I was just so proud that she got this laugh because it's just so fun. But more than just laughing, I needed to have someone I could confide in. And when I pray, I like to be specific of all the things I want. Like with Pastor Chad, before we even started dating, I made a list of all the things I wanted in my future husband. And it was just like I met him. I was like, oh, check, 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 check. <laughs> even to the point of having somebody write me a song because I just thought that'd be awesome. And he wrote me a song. Maybe he'll play it sometime. <laughs> but it didn't happen overnight. It took time, but God did bless me with some amazing friends that I could confide in. And I've had a lot of different things happen in my life with diagnoses, four miscarriages in three years, um, deaths, all kinds of things that if I didn't have those friends to confide in, it would have broken me. And I probably would be in a more depressed state. I mean, I have Jesus and we need Jesus, but we also need to have some of those friends praying with us to help us to stay floating. Um, they're my safe place, and I'm their safe place. We know each other's secrets, and we don't judge each other. We're there for each other. And we all need trustworthy friends, right? So speaking of trustworthy, it's in our human nature to talk. We like to know the latest scoop. We like to know what's going on. We like to know things before other people know things. Like, oh, did you hear? Oh, you didn't hear that yet? I already knew that. Um, so I'm going to touch on gossip for a minute because I believe the devil uses it against us, both man and woman. Women may do it a little more, but men still do gossip too. It just might look a little different. And he uses it to keep those godly friendships from flourishing because he doesn't want us to trust each other. So listen, your deep friends cannot be gossipers. If you are friends with somebody who gossips, do not tell them all of your things because you're then choosing to allow them to be disloyal to you. You're enabling their gossip issue. And anything that they say, you, it's almost like you can't really get mad at them because you already knew they were a gossiper. You told them all the stuff and they told someone else. Um, and gossipy friends need to be your adventurous ones. You can be praying for your gossiping friends. You can show them what they're doing that it's not right. But adventurous friends where you have fun with them, you laugh with them, you do not tell them everything that's going in your life with your secret, vulnerable, dark places. So remember that. You are the gatekeeper of your mouth. You choose what you tell people. And if people find out what you said, it's not right that that person told anybody, but you're also choosing to give this information out. So what you need to be doing is really don't go to like six different people because you're like, I don't like what that person said. So I'm going through this, blah, blah, blah. And then their information is godly. And you're like, I don't want to hear that. So then you go to this person and go, I know, I can't believe they did that. That You don't deserve that. And then you keep going around and it's going to go around to everybody else. So you need to pick and choose who you tell to. And like as iron sharpens iron, if your friend is telling you biblical advice, you need to take it instead of running from it. 
And if someone's comfortable talking about someone to you, they're comfortable talking about you to somebody else. And the Bible says in Proverbs 20, 19, a gossip betrays a confidence to avoid anyone who talks too much. And that doesn't mean like a talker, like blah, 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 like just talking. That means they're talking bad about people all the time. And in the moment, it may feel good to hear that gossip because you're like, ooh, that's so juicy and good, and I don't have to think about my problems because I'm thinking about what they're going through. But you're ver- verbally tearing their character apart, exposing all of their weaknesses to whoever is in that group. And, um, you know, don't allow that temptation to talk about them. If somebody's talking about somebody to you, that's when you say, wait, they're not here to defend themselves, and so we're not going to talk. Because if you stay in silence, you're agreeing with what they're saying. And then when that friend finds out you didn't stand up for them, then you're going to have a problem with that friend too. Ephesians 4, 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So gossiping doesn't benefit any of us who are listening to what they're saying. And if you're having a problem with somebody, God's going to grace you for that problem. They're not going to grace the person you're talking to. Then that person's going to start hating this person because you hate this person. And then it's going to cause this ripple effect of all these people not liking this one person because only this person was graced for it. And the Bible speaks a lot about it because gossip is toxic. It's satisfying even though it's wrong. So, you know, did you hear her? about Shelby and how she fell in the cafeteria and dumped all her food all over Tyler. How embarrassing. She's such a klutz. I know. Did you hear about Mark? I can't believe he messed up his interview. I mean, if I did that interview, they would have given me a raise before I even got the job. Oh, my gosh, right? I know. See how it happens. All this gossip's coming out. So what about when Jessica was at school and she fell going up the stairs and then um, tripped in front of everybody? I can't believe everybody's talking about that. That'd be so mortifying. Oh, wait. No, I didn't, I didn't mean it. She found out I said that. Oh, I got to take it back. What do I do? Can I? Oh, and Mark, oh, my gosh. He got the job and he found out what I said. <laughs> Oh, no, he's going to come beat me up. He's got big muscles. Oh, no, Shelby. Oh, Shelby's scary. She might dump her lunch on me. How do I fix this? We can't. Because what we say, it leaves a residue on the person we're talking about. Because nine times out of ten, they're going to find out what you said. And you can't take back what you said. You can forgive them, or they can forgive you, and that's good, but they can't, it's going to take a long time for them to move on from it, because that, that's trust, and we have to trust you, but um, the enemy likes to keep those thoughts going in our head, even when we've forgiven somebody, and those things that we say in a gratifying, instant gratification will tear people apart for years, so You know, young people, you really need to think about what you say about people that are supposed to be your friends. We're supposed to be able to lift each other up. And we don't want to be those people that are just trying to get the latest news. Because coming from somebody who's been through so much, I've had years of just heartache and distrust because I was hurt so bad. And so you really need to focus on the good things about your friends. And if you have gossipers in your world, anybody, you need to tell them, and then you need to stop it, even if you're a gossiper too. It's something that you can overcome. It's not who you are. And so it's something that God can help you through. In Matthew 7, 3 through 5, it says, Why would you focus on the flaw in someone else's life and fail to notice the glaring flaws of your own? How could you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong when you're guilty of even more? You're being hypocritical and a hypocrite. First acknowledge and deal with your own blind spots, and then you'll be capable of dealing with the blind spot of your friend. In James 4.11, it says, Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. Gossip is vile, and it breaks people, and we can't take back what we said. 
you know, and you are who you hang out with. And it's like sometimes people have heard this, sometimes not, but it's so true. If you hang around a negative person all the time, you're going to start saying negative things and feeling negative. If you hang around a happy person, even if your whole life isn't happy, you're going to have this joyful disposition on life. And if you're hanging out with a gossiper, you're going to become a gossiper. And so you really need to choose who to be friends with and aspire to be like the happy friends and aspire to be that friend that can bring joy to other people. So we need to choose our friends wisely, grab a cup of coffee, grab lunch, go to the beach, whatever it is, you need to step out and do that. In Proverbs 22, 24 through 25, it says, do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. So my daughter had a friend that did not like it when she hung out with her other friends. So that's the other thing. If you have friends, it's okay if this friend is going out with this friend and not you. And if they post it on social media, you do not have the right to get mad at them because we do not always have to be with every single friend that we have, okay? <laughs> if you're posting it to post it because you want to, awesome. If you're posting it just to show people all my friends, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons and you should probably think about that. So anyway, so her friend would get mad when she talked to other friends, and I encouraged her to talk to her because she wouldn't talk to her the next day or the next two days, and she'd come home really upset, and I'd be like, well, you know, go talk to her. Let's have some grace. Let's see if we can just, you guys can talk, work it out. So she did, and then everything was fine, and then it happened again, so we gave it one more shot, and we're like, okay, let's, let's talk to her again and remind her what we talked about, that we can be friends with other people. And then the third time it happened, it was like I had to sit Riley down and just be like, this is a really unhealthy friendship. She doesn't care about your feelings. And even though you love her and you can be nice to her, this isn't a friendship we're going to keep evolving because it's, it's tearing you apart and it's not healthy for you because I didn't want her to also attach this girl's issues onto her where then she starts getting upset with her other friends for hanging out with other friends and then it causes this rippling effect. The Bible tells us in Luke 6, 31, do to others as you would have them do to you. And it's a golden rule. It's not like I'm in a bad mood, so I'm going to be in a bad mood to everybody. And I feel like it's a lost art because I feel like everyone just wears their emotions on their sleeves and doesn't care who's around them or who's not. Like if you make a phone call and you get the person on the other line and they're super grumpy and it's like, oh, I just want you to be happy. So you try to be happy on the phone or you go into a store and you need help and the person is just miserable, it, it affects you. And so it's like we need to remember that we need to leave all of our issues at home. And if we're going into work or we're going wherever, we see people, we need to be friendly. Sometimes, um, you know, life is hard and we need to surround ourselves with the right kind of people that bring us up and not take us down. So we need to choose to be empowering to each other. We need to choose to be complimenting each other like I talked about before. We need to say if someone's having a really great hair day, you need to say you're having a really great hair day because we all know it's really hard. Or if, like, guys are like, yeah, I just bench pressed like, 400 pounds, and then you'd be like, oh, man, that's awesome. I can only do the bar. <laughs> We need to be excited when other people get their blessings. So if you want to get married and your friend's engaged, don't get mad at that friend and be like, I'm not going to be in your wedding because you're getting married and I'm not. Or if somebody wants a house and you want a house, but they just got their house, you need to be excited for them because your blessing's coming when God's ready to give it to you. And can I also say shame off of you and your past? Because your past doesn't define who you are, right? So it also doesn't define the new friendships that you're making. If you meet some people, you don't have to tell them every little secret about your past. It's your choice to tell them what you want to tell them. Start out as adventurous friends and see where it leads up because not every person will be that deep friend. But when you have that deep friend, it's going to be organic. It's like you're just going to click. And if it's forced, then that friendship is probably not supposed to be your deep friendship. And they're not going to be able to handle what you have to say. So don't feel like I can't have friends because I did X, Y, and Z in my past. I can't be friends because they're going to find out what I did. Because you deserve to have amazing, lasting friendships. And I know it's different for men than women to find friends. I know that women crave all the talking and men don't. Women can be more vulnerable, a lot more easy. But men, you need friends. Youth men, you need friends 
friends. You have to have those friends that you can confide in that's like, hey, I'm struggling in my marriage. Hey, my home life is awful and I don't know who else to go to. Or um, I don't know, I'm, I'm mad at God and I don't know why I'm struggling and I need you and you just need that friend to pick you up and be like, let's go, bro. Let's go do this. We got this. And the same with women. If we're struggling, we're emotional, and we just are having a bad day, like, we need to have people that can pick us up and take us to where we're needing to be because they may see things that we don't, you know. And men, you can also be like, like, Pastor Chad has a great friend, and there is a big windstorm that happened, and we have this tent in our driveway um, for his motorcycles, and this windstorm came, and I was like, oh, no, because the, the tent went up, and it was just being held on by a peg on the motorcycle. And I'm like, I can't help you with this. I tried. I went out there. I'm like, I can't do this. So he had this friend come for an hour in the pouring rain, and they pieced it all back together and fixed it. But I, I can be a friend to Chad, but I can't be the friend that he needs to help with something physical like that. So we all need friends. And don't let pride get in the way. Don't think, oh, I don't need friends because I can do it all on my own, because you can't. Everybody needs somebody, because who's going to help pick you up? Who's going to help try and, like, shape you into what God wants you to be? Um, and I know it's hard, the introvert, extrovert thing that, okay, you've got an introvert here, and you've got a group of people here. This, this person wants to be in that group, even if they're not talking to anybody. They want somebody to be like, hey, come hang out with us so that they can feel included and feel their friendship rather than standing over here and being like, okay, when's someone going to talk to me? And I've been there. I understand that. And it's the most awful feeling to just, you want to go, but you're just, the words don't come out. But I'm challenging you to find your voice and make some new friends and walk into that circle because you're like, I'm fun. I have something to say. And let's be friends. My heart is for everyone to have these amazing friendships. So get yourself bold and invite somebody to coffee or lunch after this. What perfect time. We're all family, right? We weren't meant to live this life alone. And I want to pray for the opportunity that you guys will have doors open and find the words to make friends. And I'm also going to give you an opportunity to give your heart to Jesus. Because if you haven't, you're missing out. He's our number one friend, and he's always there, and he gives us wholeness, and he gives us life, and it's something that we all need. So God, I'm just gonna pray. God, I thank you for this room. I thank you for this family. I thank you that we can all be here together, and I just pray, God, that you would give every person in this room the words to say to make some new friends, that you would help them to be bold and go out there and just do it, and that they would just have these lasting friendships no matter what type it is, God, that everybody needs something. And I pray that you would just knock on their heart and say, go do it. Even if you're feeling right now, like I can never do that. You are so worthy and deserving of it. I just pray that you would just touch them. And God, I also pray for every person in this room that hasn't given their heart to you, that you would be stirring in them right now, that they would just know this is what is missing, the void in my heart the sadness needs to go. And if that's you and you just feel like, God, I need you as my friend. I need you in my life. Then just raise your hand right now while nobody's looking and just know that God loves you and he cares about you. And Jesus, we just love you. Let's just say this together. God, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us. I ask that you come into my heart and fill all the voids that are inside. I'm excited for this journey and this friendship, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, how good was that? Didn't she do a great job? Amazing. Hey, if you made that decision, whether you raised your hand or not, if you said that prayer, God, he's listening. Whether you, see, whether you raise your hand or not, he hears your, your heart. Whether you raise your hand or not, he hears your heart. And uh, the best thing about church is that we do it together. No one here is perfect, right? I always say, if you are, go ahead and fly around the room. Let's see it. Right? So no one here is perfect. We're all just trying to do better, to be better. And what I know is that we, we can't do better on our own. 
And that's why we need Jesus. And so for those that made that decision, there's a little book in the seat back in front of you. Or if you're streaming with us, just message us on whatever social media platform you're on. Uh, and we'll make sure to send this to you. We've also got a free four-week class you're about to see a video on that uh, just helps you move forward in this faith journey. The church wasn't man's idea. It was God's idea. It was an amazing idea. And uh, I love that we get to do life together. Did you receive the word today? Come on, so good. So good. Hey, church, know that we love you. We're praying for you. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you again for being with us today. We hope that you were encouraged by that powerful message. If you made that decision for the first time, we want to say congratulations. Here are some ways that we can help. First, send us an email at info at metrochurch.tv letting us know that you made that decision and we'll send you this free book called What on Earth Am I Here For? that helps describe God's plan for your life. If you are with us in person, this booklet is also available in the seat back in front of you. Our office will also send you information about our Dive In class, which is a four-week series offered here at Metro Church. If you missed the beginning of the service and you would still like to participate in giving, you may do so on our website or on our app. We also have generosity boxes available by our exit doors. For those of you who have joined us for your first time, don't forget to pick up a blue gift bag on your way out. If you need prayer for anything, we would love to believe with you. Please send us an email at info at metrochurch.tv with your prayer request. Thank you again for being with us today, Metro Church family. We love you and we can't wait to see you next week.